concrete is the second most used raw material after water so it is all of our duties to make sure we do not exploit natural resource just because we need to build these i have already spoken about cement the most important ingredient of concrete next is m sand or sand or fine aggregates that we use for concrete being a saturday it's a pretty busy day for us we love to visit every single site to you know see the progress and to pay off most of the bills and uh, also on the way we'll today talk about m sand m sand has recently replaced river sand almost entirely in the entire construction industry and there's a lot of myths there's a lot of bluff about m sand and a lot of bluff about river sand so we'll go to site and we'll check out what's happening there we've been using concrete since the greek empire the use of concrete dates back to more than 5000 years however we haven't changed a lot of things we still been doing things the same way just like caveman not long ago we changed we switched from lime to cement that was a huge change and a lot of people were not able to accept it and now there for the second change of the millennial that is moving over from river sand to m sand what is m sand really what does sand really do in concrete that is a very important question that needs to be answered river sand or m sand both of them they do the same job it's basically filler material for the concrete the finer they are the better it is but it depends on the usage they essentially just cover the pores between coarse aggregates to provide a well packed and stiff mix of concrete a good dense concrete implies better strength and more durability a high durability a high a good compaction of concrete is essential to make sure there's very little permeability very little seepage and also eventually leading to its durability sand is the most preferred uh, fine aggregate mainly for the for its resistance towards reactivity the silica and the sand makes it highly non reactive making it the best material to be used for concrete for structures that is going to last for decades or even centuries that is what we need sand essentially does one thing fill all the voids that form between coarse aggregates that is this and the cement paste cement is a very expensive material to be used as a filler and that is why we use sand however the damage that we've done over the past centuries with the over dredging and over usage of river sand has led to the drying of rivers to flash floods and caused a lot of environmental deaths and it eventually exerts the pressures on the dams that we build eventually making them unusable or useless so over a couple of decades we've switched over to manufacture sand the small scale constructions have been hit very recently whereas the large scale constructions have been hit a long time back all over india in the past few, a decade or so m sand has been widely used as a replacement for river sand what is the main difference between m sand and river sand the only advantage that sand has over m sand is that it's made up of very fine particles since it's weathered by water it is the surface texture of sand is really smooth which means that very little cement is required to achieve the same amount of workability on the contrary by using m sand you get a really good rough texture so that you know the adhesive addition between cement paste and the aggregate is much better when using m sand moreover the physical crushing of m sand involves you know milling or ball milling or crushing or jar crushing which will ensure that you know the uh, surface texture that we get is really rough therefore it's best to use m sand instead of river sand for concrete uh, river sand is normally quarried you know the extraction of river sand is normally quarried through river by means of dredging and most of our cases excessive dredging that is killing the rivers right now so that is the reason why 
the Vaigai River has completely drawn, gone dry in Madurai and a lot of rivers that we have killed so far by means of excessive dredging and that is one of the main reasons that we should not, why we shouldn't use river sand. Other than that, it's not a very efficient way of using a construction material because once extraction is complete, uh, since river sand is naturally weathered by means of water, it has a lot of cells in it uh, and we have to spend a lot of time, you know, to remove all those cells. Maximum allowed cell is about 10% or 3% in normal plastering and concreting cases. Whereas there are cases where the cells would go up to an exceeding 15% which would cause airline cracks and shrinkage cracks heavy in any of the constructions. It's high time that we switch over to something more engineering and more technical and a material that where you know human intervention can affect the quality of its manufacturing. And that's why Monsanto is a better option. Strength of concrete normally depends on a lot of factors, but then one factor that we really cared about is what is the amount of gripping that the aggregates have with cement paste. And this factor is mainly affected by how smooth the surface of the aggregate is. So when you take the difference between a pebble and the normal aggregate that we use for construction, the difference is that the aggregates that we use for construction normally have a very rough texture on the surface. This, with this we can make sure that the cement paste grips the surface of the aggregate thereby there is no the, the only way that the concrete could fail is either when the cement paste layer breaks off or the aggregate crushes whereas the problem with using pebbles is that they can just slip off out of contact and that is why hem sand is better than river sand or a crushed aggregate is better than a pebble or a river or water weathered aggregate for concrete the best way to avoid any of these is to go with the construction methodology and a technology where there is no so much debris this is just the debris that is caused from a construction of a very small area this is hardly 4000 square feet and this debris and all this can be avoided with one simple factor precast construction and pre-engineered buildings just using the right type of sand or right of the cement or the right quantity of cement does not ensure proper strength. But in fact, what properly ensures the strength of any plaster or any mortar or any concrete structure is how well it's cured. Normally a concrete takes about 28 days to attain about 90% of its strength and about 365 days to attain 100%. We cannot pretty much wait for <coughs> entire concrete to set for the entire year. So what we do is cure them at least for 7 days where they attain about 70% of the strength. And anyways, we design, we over design the structures a little bit. So where 18 megapascal is required, we design it for about 20 megapascal. So that the 7 day strength is enough for most of our plastering and motor works. There is this famous claim in a lot of uh, websites and few blogs that I read too, that you know, using m sand would cause cracks in plasters and cracks in block works. The main reasons why cracks, these cracks happen is because uh, concrete and uh, plastering or block work, they have a very different uh, coefficient of thermal expansion which causes them to you know, expand and shrink differently under the influence of temperature. So in order to reduce that, what has to be done is this, if you can see closely, there is this thin mesh, there is a thin chicken mesh that we provide and it's hammered into the other thing, into the block work and plastering is normally done over this wherever there is a joint between concrete and block work uh, this kind of a chicken mesh is used so that the rate of uh, you know difference in uh, thermal contraction and expansion will be you know the stretch the develop will be taken a little bit by this thereby reducing a hairline cracks shrinkage cracks in general hairline cracks are high during the initial first one year of construction or initial first one year of cement setting so there may be they may be you know they may be a big threat on the first first year but afterwards at a point they stop developing 
so th that would be a right time to you know actually uh, repair these cracks or spend some energy or money into repairing any other cracks in a building so if you've just moved into a new building and you think you know it's a new building and cracks are appearing uh, it is bound to happen because that is a major shortcoming of uh, major shortcoming of cement and concrete construction if there is one small flaw or there is one part where there is excess cement added these shrinkage cracks would you know just grow out like that speaking of having cracks there is another myth that I would like to bust adding excess cement is definitely not going to help the case in fact adding excess cement is only going to make it worse shrinkage would be more if there is excess of cement or silt content so as you see cement is a very fine very fine uh, particle and adding excess cement is not going to do any good to any shrinkage cracks so if you think you know when your mystery is doing the work if you think you know asking him to add more cement to the plaster mix would do the job you are absolutely wrong if you are already in a home that has a lot of hairline cracks the best solution is is to just leave it alone don't touch it for a few years and when you do your next painting you can just you know touch up touch up with a cement or mortar wherever required or just if it's less than 3 mm just leave it leave it like that apply a coat of putty paint it and we're good to go otherwise this has nothing to do with m sand or the type of sand you use this however could be there could be a minor you know if the sand we use be it river sand or m sand if it has too much silt uh, this could be uh, the cracks developing in all of these corners would be too much so that can be avoided by you know removing silt before before we use the sand here is a sample mix of concrete being mixed so just a sample it's always best to you know dry mix the contents first we are doing it on a cement floor but it's highly recommended you do it on a metal sheet or a PVC sheet where you know the water you add does not get you know it doesn't seep in uh, through the floor so that moisture is preserved also the cement paste is preserved so after the initial dry mix it looks somewhat like this the mix ratios will vary based on the requirement of cement based on the requirement so this is just a random mix that we are doing just to show you guys how it is done so first it is essential to do a dry mix like this add water in small ratios though we have a specific water cement ratio for all this when you know doing hand mixtures it's pretty much not impossible to you know check the water content how much water we are adding every time so it's best to do a sample check like this add a little bit of water just to hydrate the entire cement and then add a little bit more to add the workability safe to sprinkle water like this not pour it off all in one stretch now we have reached an optimum mixing this thing this is a very dry mix for now uh, something that most people don't realize or most labors don't you know ignore is that the more you mix this cement the more excess hydration water is given out so if you want a better workability a little bit of more mixing would actually give out little water and improve the mobility of the liquid or of the concrete as you see that you know little bit more water is added concrete is starting to moisten up uh, it's giving out water if you can closely watch the more you mix from now it will keep giving out water but this mobility is not required it's not uh, enough for us since we are pouring a small bit of uh, column here a little bit more of uh, mobility and flowability is required so we are going to increase the water cement ratio a little bit adding water little by little improves the overall what do you say overall mixing uh, overall mixability of the concrete you know you can make sure that it's not too uh, watery 
and it doesn't just flow out like that. So this you see is how a perfect concrete should look. Now this is good to be cast. This is how normally concrete should be poured. But I strongly do not recommend mixing it like this. If you have a batch mixer or batch flour or a pan mixer, it's always best or a drum mixer. But uh, if you have to make small batches like this, it's always best to do it this way. And obviously with a small uh, sheet plate or a metal plate in the bottom.